Uh, my name is Clint Coates and I'm a hydrologic technician with the Orlando office of the USGS. The storm's impacting the east coast, so mm -hmm. we, we place sensors anywhere that we can in the storm's path. And we try to get one every 10 miles so that we can see what's happening as you go out from the center of the storm. You know? This port right here is the opening where it takes its reading. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, it uses optical technology to communicate right there. So that cap just comes off and we, we have a shuttle that we can connect to the end of this. And then via ultraviolet um, communication, it will download or take a program or whatever we have to do. Well, so then we is just it, cap it and, real time or you have to no, collect these it later? No, will not be real time. Okay. Yeah. But there are some that you're deploying along uh, Georgia and Florida that yes. are real time. Yeah. We do have some that are called RDGs, which stands for rapid deployment gauges. Yeah. And those, those are active real time gauges that have a satellite uh, transmission associated with them. And I, I'm not sure what the, what the rate of transmission is. Our typical transmitters are hourly. So they take a, at a normal gauge, we take a, a, a reading every 15 minutes and then it gets transmitted once an hour. So she's gonna take a, a measurement right now from the base of that. So once we get this screwed to the post, she'll measure down from the top of that RP to the foot of this, and we've already we already know the distance there, so we'll subtract it out and get our actual elevation of the measurement point. Um, let me see if I can just the hole's already there from last time. So this is the sheet that we're writing down all of the elevation information in, so we know the elevation of that specific RP, and so when I just uh, use the engineer's rule to get the elevation of the foot of that bracket, I can type it in here, and then we know the exact elevation of the actual sensor. What exactly does it do? It's uh, Some of them, we have one in the, that they came and put in the other day, it's in the tree over here, and it's a... It's a barometer. It's, it's really a tree. All it it's is. in the tree. Yeah, they just strapped it to the. You can see the orange strap over there. Oh, is that what that was? Yep. And okay. Inside there is a pipe just like this, and it's a it's a housing, and it's holding. It gets mounted. It gets mounted on the post or the tree or whatever, and okay. then we attach a barometer in here, and then this can go on and lock it just for security. But the barometers are reading air pressure. So as the storm moves ashore, you'll see that air pressure um, change. And then we use the same instrument to document water level. It's, it's really just a pressure sensor. So it'll, it'll tell you the pressure of the air that it's in or the water. So really? as the water levels rise, they submerge that pressure sensor and then that pressure sensor can tell you how much water is above it, essentially, is what we're finding out. What does that do for like people here in New Smyrna Beach? Um, it helps. The data that we are collecting helps kind of uh, in prediction models for storm surge. You hear a lot of talk about storm surge and that's the water that comes ashore. What we're doing with this network, it's a, this is, we call it a um, short term network because these gauges don't stay out. We just put them out in, in advance of a storm. Mm -hmm. So we'll come out, uh, install them, the storm will pass, we'll come back, uh, retrieve them, collect the data and then put all that data out. And then that data is used for uh, no by NOAA and other agencies to help predict storm surge. We aren't measuring storm surge; we're measuring storm tide. So this is the this is the increased tide effect associated with the storm as it comes ashore. Okay. Is what we're actually measuring. But then NOAA and the other agencies will use that data to try to, to try to calibrate their storm surge models for future storms. Oh, okay. So and hopefully get a better idea of. Who needs to be evacuated? Who's going to be affected the most? And that kind of how far reaching the effects of the storm will be.